statements right here for the presentations they have made and uh, all the parishioners and guests that are here who have come to celebrate God with me. Because I miss your responsibilities. You have traveled a long ways to come and uh, celebrate this occasion with me. And in John 3.16, it tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And a good outline of this is God, who is the greatest lover, so loved, shows the greatest degree. The world is the greatest company that he gave. He demonstrates the greatest act, his only begotten Son, who is the greatest gift, that whosoever believes is the greatest simplicity in him, who is the greatest person, should not perish, that reveals the greatest promise, but signifies the, gre but signifies the greatest difference, have is the greatest certainty, everlasting life is the greatest possession we can have. Even a child can understand that it's the greatest gift that the great God has bestowed upon us. <coughs> the God who created the heavens and the earth, he's made this possible for us to have life eternal. So God loved a world of sinners, lost and ruined from the fall of man, from Adam and Eve. But salvation is a gift of God, which offers free to all. And salvation is a gift to be received, not a goal to, to achieve by man's work. In Matthew 6.33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I took that as a motto when I was a teenager, and I took it as my favorite verse, and I wanted to stand on it and live for Jesus, and he has taken care of me. And in John 14, 23, Jesus says, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. And of course, as um, Proverbs 11, 19 says, As righteousness leads to life, so he that pursues evil pursues it on uh, to his own death. So we want to flee temptation and don't leave um, for the address. <laughs> In Luke 17, 26 to 27, this tells us that as in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the, at the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and, and until the day that Noah and his family entered the ark. And then the flood came and destroyed them, all that were not in the ark of safety. And uh, in um, verses 28 to 30, it says, Likewise, also in, as in the days of Lot, they did eat and drink, and bought and sold, and they planted and they built. But on the day when Lot went out of Sodom, fire and brimstone rained from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be at the day of the Son of Man is revealed. And in Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14, it sums it all up. And um, it says, Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every word into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So it is our duty to lead others and to hold high a standard and um, be excellent and moral and uh, have a good relationships with Christ and in, as well as intellectual achievements. Now in Matthew 5, 14 to 15, I like these verses. I learned them when I was in grade school my stepfather and mother and I moved to Kansas City, Kansas, and Daddy Doyle, Pastor Victoria Tabernacle. 
But in, uh, I was in the sixth grade, and must have been a good Christian teacher, and she was allowed to teach us the Word of God. And it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set up on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that's what we should do. And, and I like those verses and I never forgot them. And we would say them every day and, and we could do that. And so um, I, I like another verse in, in uh, Psalms 119, 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. We hide his word in our heart and keep it and train up a child in the way he should go and try to uh, set good examples. When they are old, they won't depart from it. They will come back to God and understand those promises. And I thank God for every one of the heritage God gave me. And I pray that none will be lost. And I'm so glad that the Lord has written our names in the heavenlies. I'm glad to see you, Blake. He's a great football player. <laughs> Baseball player like his dad, his Uncle Paul, Daddy David. But I uh, just thank God for all of you. And this church is just wonderful. And how the young people sing and are living for God. And the pastor's preaching good sermons and he, his family setting good examples. So I, I just want to thank all of you again, all you dignitaries and ministers, and especially you, Dr. Benjamin. 